my friend or she's my colleague there is a difference praise the Lord Hallelujah. it says in Proverbs 22 verse 24 to 25 it says make no friendship with an angry man and with a furious man thou shall not go least thou learn his ways and get a snare to thy soul do not make a friend with someone that is hot-tempered. Do not go on their own path. Least you go snare. Least you begin to behave like them. Least you begin to talk like them. Least you begin to play like them. And then you will be ensnared with their behavior or with their character. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So in today's topic is saying to us, a wise man chooses his friend carefully. Now he said, let me ask you the question. The person you are listening to, is he taking you up? Is the person bringing you down? What type of message do you hear? Do you listen to negative message? Do you neg listen to negative advice? Or do you listen to positive one that will lift up your spirit? He said because negative words have a way of a defying your life. Never you listen to negative word. Praise the Lord. The book of 1 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 6, it says, your glory is not good. Know ye not that a little loving, loving the whole lamb. When you say that someone is just your friend, please understand that a little loving, loving the whole lamb. Friendship is about choice, it's not by force. If you know where you are going, then someone is not going there, then withdraw yourself from the person. Amen. Amen. Many a times I say to my children, because this month is the month of our, we dedicated this month to the book of Proverbs, me and my family. So we always read one chapter of the book of Proverbs every night before we pray. And I keep saying this to them. Do not follow the ways of the evil. 
do not even look by the side the way they behave. Least you go snare. Least you begin to join them without you knowing. Don't say that, oh, I'm hanging out with this person, but the person that you are hanging out, the behavior of that person is not good. Before you know it, you begin to imitate the life of that person. And last night, one of my sons said, how? How will that be? I said, it's always been. I have got the experience many years ago without knowing. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And I always say this to them. In the book of 1 Corinthians 15, 33, it says, do not be deceived. Evil communication corrupts good manners. It does not matter the way you think that I'm standing. What matters is what do you hear? What do you believe on? The people you're hanging around, the people that you see every day in your life, the people that are closer to you, that is what matters. That's why many a times a preacher might, might stand on the pulpit preaching, and immediately you hear the word from the preacher, you say, oh, he speaks like his master. Who are you hanging out with? Choose your friend carefully. Praise the Lord. Amen. And I'm going to close by saying this word, and we're going to pray for it. Our regional overseer, Reverend Chuka Ogupe, what says that a friend or the right person, there are four people that we need in our life that will help us to build us, to model us, to get us to the place that we want to be for people. He said, one, people that will see you for who you are, not because of what you have or what they are gaining on you. Two, people that will speak for you. Do you have such a people in your life? Three, people that will stand for you. Four, people that will go for you. They see you, they speak for you, they stand for you and they go for you. They defend you. Anywhere they are, they defend you, they speak for you. They make sure that you achieve that goal that you ought to achieve. And all the people that will bring you down. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I just want us now to meditate or to go home and think about this. I will quote one of uh, American um, author and orator. We know him. He has been an advice to so many presidents. I'm talking of no other person than Booker T. Washington. He wants quotes, and I will quote him. He said, associate yourself with people of good quality. For it is better to be alone than to be in bad company of everyone. I will leave that with us. Praise the Lord. Amen. Let's just stand up now. I want us to say this prayer. Father, as I hear your word today, as I hear your word today, help me to choose the right person in my life. Help me to choose the right person in my life. In the name of Jesus. Pray that prayer for yourself. God, help me choose the right person in my life. Help me choose the right person in my life. Help me choose the right person in my life. Keep praying, keep praying, keep praying. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Jesus. That was a powerful wisdom of the day. Oh, Jesus. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. Oh man, they call, say call on Abadosa. Help me choose the right person. Help me choose the right person. What's in the mood of prayer? Oh Jesus, they call, say call on Abadosa. Oh.
Praising to them that are bound. Verse 2, sir. I want you to remember verse 1. It says, To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of the vengeance of our God, to comfort all that mourn. Verse 3, please, sir. It says, To appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, to give unto them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise. In the stead of grievance, of grievance, we are going to pray for the garment of praise this morning. Upon this is spirit of David, sir. This is spirit of David. This is spirit of David. One thing we know about David is praise. The Psalms is one of the longest and the, yes, the longest book in the Bible. That's one thing we know about David is praise. He was a man of praise, and I know my Bible says, and God says, David is a man after my heart. There is something that gets close to God's heart, is praise. We need to ask God for the garment of praise. I will finish that scripture. And that they might be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord that he might be glorified. He says the, the only garment the scripture talked about here was the garment of praise. That is what we need to wear. I want you to open your mind. Our program is coming. It's this month. It's two, it's two weeks from now. Hey. I don't know how many of you are excited. I know Mama is excited. I'm excited too. We have a the other praise is what coming. We are going to be asking for the garment of praise. Ah, my toko padabadosa. It's a two-day power pack praise and worship program. We are going to ask God for the garment of praise. The garment of praise instead of the spirit of happiness. Ask for the garment of praise. Ask for the garment of praise. Likada la badok se ko pada badok sa. Lito se to podok se to pada badok sa. The garment of praise, Lord. The garment of praise, Lord. Man da ko se to pada badok sa. Lord, we ask for the garment of praise. We ask for the garment of praise, Lord. Liba dok se ko pada badok sa. Upon every member. Of, upon every member of Trade Babrika, upon every member of Spirit of David, we ask for the garment of praise. 
And he shall bring forth the headstone thereof with shoutings, grace, grace unto it. I'll repeat that scripture. Like I told you, the Bible is a very, 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 very great book. Oh, Jesus. Hey, Jesus. I want to challenge the uh, young ones. Hey, you see these scriptures? Hey, the more you start reading the scripture, the more you start, you start experiencing God in a different angle. The knowledge of God starts happening. It says, Who art thou, O great mountain, before the Rubabel? Thou shalt become a plain. And he shall bring forth the headstone thereof with shoutings, Hallelujah. crying, Hallelujah. Grace, grace. Unto it. Hey! 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 Marco Panabadoxa, Panabadoxa. We are going to be commanding every mountain. <laughs> now, if I look at this, every time I look at this scripture, the mountain was not physical. Anytime I looked at it, it wasn't a physical mountain that we see. You know, like, oh, are you talking about that mountain we see in Island East or Island West? No. That was not the mountain. Anytime I look at this scripture, open your mouth and command every mountain before the planning committee. The committee that has been anointed to plan for this program. Every mountain they face. I want you to command that mountain to be played. Open your mouth and pray. Every mountain before every mountain, every mountain before the committee of Yada praise. Every mountain that is facing the committee that is planning Yada praise. I want you to command that mountain to be played. Likata la badoxa. Likata la badoxa. la badoxa. la badoxa. If you can see that mountain, you can command it to be played. If you can see that mountain, you can command it to be played. I want you to command that mountain to be played. Jesus, drop it down a little, please, Joma. In Jesus' name. Amen. Look at it. Every head, every leader in Trem Paprika is responsible in the other place. We know that in every department. Every worker has something to do. Every committee that has been separated to also act has something to do. We are going to be doing one thing practical as the scriptures say. We are going to be shouting grace upon them. We are going to be shouting grace, grace, grace. That's just how we're going to be doing it. Open your mouth and shout grace upon them. Grace, grace, grace. The Bible says, and this shall bring forth the headstone. We shout it. In this we speak it. So we shout it. Grace, 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 Lord. Grace upon them. Every worker, grace, grace. I wanted to read one, another city of the game. He said, The glory of the latter house, he said, shall be greater than that of the former. That was the scripture. I want to read Job 8 7. We all know the scripture of Job. Job 8 7, quickly, please, sir. So I want them to see it on the screen. I want them to see it on the screen. Job 8 7. You don't need to open your Bible, it's on the screen. He says, Though thy beginning was small, yet thy latter end shall greatly increase. I want to tie this scripture to the scripture that says, The glory of the latter shall be greater than the former. You see, I refuse to live where there is more. There is one thing that makes me uncomfortable, anybody that knows me, it's when things don't grow. Because in everywhere I break through my scripture, 
It says that the glory of the latter is, shall be greater than the former. And whenever I look at my scripture, it tells me that though thy beginning might be small, there is something that is a sin, is when the, when the later remains small. That is, the, that is the sin in it. That is what gets me uncomfortable. It says, though that beginning shall be small, there is something that is bad there, only when the latter remains small. So when it is small, there is no problem. It's only the problem when it remains small. We are going to be speaking to Yana praise. We are going to be speaking greater glory. Open your mouth and speak. Half the time. Open your mouth and speak greater glory. Greater glory upon the other praise. Greater glory. Greater glory. Greater glory. Open your mouth and speak greater glory. Mante Padabadoxa. Let Padakoxa go Padabadoxa. Liko Salabadox, Eto Padabadoxa. Greater glory, Lord. 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 Manda Labadox, Eto Padabadoxa. Leko Padabadox, Eto Padabadoxa. Mandeko, Seko Padabadoxa. Hey, Mandeko, Zeta, greater glory, Lord. Oh, Manda Badoxa, Leko Padabadoxa. Mande Leko, Seko Padabadoxa. Let us say that in Jesus' name. Forgive me, I have three minutes to go. We have to rush this. Look at it. The Bible says in Habakkuk 2.2. 2. Open your scripture quickly. Uh, media, leave it. Just media, help us. Habakkuk 2.2, 2, quickly. It says that the Lord answered me and said, Write a vision and make it plain upon tables. I like this last part. In comma, it says, That he may run that readeth it. It says, There is something in, in that scripture that I want us to pray for. We prayed it in the youth last uh, yesterday, but the scripture just hit in my heart. I wanted to close, and that scripture said, "No, it's here." There is a grace to run with a vision. We have to pray it upon every member of tribe, Africa. The vision might be given to one man, but you need a grace to run with it. The Bible says, "Write your vision and make it plain." We put it on the tables. You may not be the one that will run with the vision. He says, so that he may run that he did it. As many of us that are connected to Tremba Brigade, I want to ask for grace to run with the vision, the other praise. Open your mouth and ask God for the grace. Ask God for the grace. As many that are connected to Tremba Brigade, ask him for the grace to run with the vision. Ask him for the grace to run with the vision. Ask him for the grace to run with the vision. Run with the vision. So that when you have given an opportunity, when you read what it is, the idea to make a difference the idea to increase it, the provision for the vision will be available. You don't run with a vision without provision. Ask God for the 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 provision. Open your mouth and ask God. Children of God, open your mouth and ask God. Open your mouth and ask God for the provision. Lipa de badok seko padabadoksa. Mande dog seko talabadoksa. I am not going to pray for you. Open your mouth and ask God for the provision. If really you want to run with the vision, ask Him for the provision to run with the vision. Lay Padabadoxa. The provision is in every form and shape. Oh, man, the dog say, Co Padabadoxa. The provision can be in any shape and form. Ask God for the provision. Thank you, Jesus. Open your mouth and thank Him for us as prayers. Jesus name for prayer. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the living Jesus. Hallelujah. There is something that makes me come into your presence. My
Let us all be in the mood of worship this morning. Let's begin to praise the name of the Lord. Let's begin to bless his holy name. For he's worthy of our praise. Begin to magnify his holy name. Thank you for the gift of life. Lord, we thank you for the name of the Lord. We thank you for God. Oh, we worship you. are the Lord. Let your name be
Jesus' mighty name we have worship. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name we have worship. Amen. Let the living so shout hallelujah. hallelujah. If you are alive, shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Amen. Put your hands together for Jesus as you take your beautiful seat. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God bless you all for coming to church. Hallelujah. When I was coming this morning, I tried to dress corporately. I wore my everything and I put on the jacket and I said, my son, check me out. Do I look good? He said, mommy, you look good. Hallelujah. Now I'm in the church. I underrated the weather. Hallelujah. So you can see I folded my clothes because we're in the battlefront. Hallelujah. May the Lord visit somebody today. Amen. I say from my heart, I may the Lord visit somebody Amen. today. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm a woman that doesn't fear the days of little beginning. I don't fear the days of little beginning. Because I've seen it. And I've seen it grow. And I can see it grow again. Hallelujah. Amen. So when I'm on the altar preaching... Even if I'm going to be preaching to the chairs spiritually, I am sitting people on that chair knowing that in no time they shall be filled. Hallelujah. Yeah. So if you are alive with me in this service, your mouth is your weapon of victory. My pastor used to say back home, he said, close mouth is a close destiny. If you don't want your destiny to be close, whenever you have a chance to echo, amen. I want you to echo it like nobody's business. Amen. Somebody shout amen. amen. Let the living so shout amen. amen. So I'm dressed like a cowboy in the presence of God. Hallelujah. Amen. amen. Before I proceed, I want to say thank you. When I saw the friend's test messages, test message in that middle of the night, my body was shaking because I was already fucked out. And I saw the message. I said, there is no room for it. No. Hallelujah. Yes. And thank you for the privilege. Counting me worthy. Not because I'm too perfect to stand on this exalted altar. To be the one to share the word of grace today. The Lord will bless you richly. Amen. On a daily basis, he will renew your strength. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. The work of the Lord under your care will grow speedily. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. The name of this ministry is the Spirit of David. And the last time I checked my Bible, when Paul and Silas were in prison, and the Bible said they began to sing and they began to pray. Chains began to be falling off. Whenever you step into the Spirit of David, unconsciously or knowingly, whatever chain that is holding you bound is falling away in the name of Jesus. Something happened during the week. It changed, it shifted my perspective. It changed my life forever. Not that I was watching it or moving, but it's a story that is close to me. Hallelujah. We are in seasons of perfection. This month has been declared by the Spirit of God through the servant of God that we are in the seasons of perfection. I had, I had a message previously kept one side because some time ago, I was laying on my bed. And usually, pastor will share the program for the day. And I was assigned to pray on that day. And I, in front of pastor's office in that revelation, mama walked up to me. I said, ah, you're not going to be praying today. You're going to be sharing the word. Not only did she say that, she told me in that revelation that the theme of that message is that see what God can, see what grace can do in the life of a man. What grace can do in the life of a man is a sermon from the spirit. It's not the one I sit and I crack my brain. What grace can do in the life of a man? Hallelujah. 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 So I kept that sermon. I said, someday we shall get to it. Hallelujah. But when daddy came last night, then I said, we must be obedient. Because he told us when he was teaching on Thursday, he said, write this thing down the day you are called to preach. Do not tell us you don't have what to preach. Even this one you have heard is a sermon to preach. Hallelujah. So I wrote on that grace 
So today I shall be laying the foundation, being the first Sunday, am I correct? Yes. On the subject of perfection. The keys to perfection. We will come back to what grace can do some other day. Hallelujah. And so we're going to be sharing briefly, maybe 10 minutes, 15 minutes. I want the media to work with me on understanding perfection. Things you need to know about perfection. First of all, I want you to know and take it into your spirit that we are all work in progress. Every one of us, we are work in progress. Don't write up yourself. Don't write up your neighbor. Don't write up your church. Don't say, ah, this church is so small. Then you can't see big things. Because everything goes through a process of life. The only thing that happens suddenly, they don't last. But when you follow the process of life, they become enduring blessings. First, a seed must be sown. Then it must be watered. Then it must be dressed. Then it begins to grow. Then it begins to bear fruit. There is a process in life. So today, briefly, I will share with you some few things you need to know about perfection. Ephesians chapter 4. I want to read some few verses. Ephesians chapter 4, verse number 12. Ephesians chapter 4. Maybe I should run quickly from verse 1 to 12. Hallelujah. Please, if you have your Bible, I'm a bit of old school. I have the Bible on my phone and I also have it physically. Hallelujah. And I also have Bible available if you want to enrich your spiritual library. You can ask for them. There is huge discount. It's not for profit, but it's to support the work of God. Hallelujah. Amen. From verse 4, it says, As a prisoner for the Lord, that I urge you to live a life worthy of the calling you have received. He said, Be completely humble and gentle. Be patient, bearing with one another in love. Make every effort to keep the unity of the spirit through the bond of peace. There is one body and one spirit. Just as you were called to one hope when you were called. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all. Who is over all and through all and in all. But to each one of us, Grace has been given as Christ apportioned it. This is why it says, when he ascended on high, he took many captives and gave gifts to his people. What does he ascend? It means, except that he also descended to the lower earthly regions. He who descended is the very one who ascended, higher than all the heavens, in order to fill the whole universe. So Christ himself gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors and teachers to equip his people to work of service so that the body of Christ may be built up until we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. May God bless the reading of this word in the name of Jesus. Amen. And I pray that everyone shall be a partaker of the mysteries of this word today in the name of Jesus. Amen. I want the media to give me the King James Version of verse 12 and verse number 13. The King James Version. From verse 11, it says, So Christ gave some apostles. He gave some the prophets. He made some the evangelists, some pastors and some teachers. Now verse number 12, he said, for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. We are in the month of perfection. Hallelujah. There are things that triggers perfection. There are things that make for perfection. In the church of God, the scripture that we have read spoke about the great virtues that God has planted in men, not in cheers. He has planted great virtues, gifts in men. When we speak of perfection, I read that perfection is a process 
of making something to become whole. It's a process of making something to become flawless. It's a process of excellency. And that is why when we come into the church, if you see what is not right, a man and a woman of understanding has the responsibility to know that it is a work in progress. Men and women are needed to make it right. Gifts, the Bible said, they are given to men to perfect the saint. Whatever gifts that the Lord has given to you, it is not small. As I watch my coming pastor Sarah singing on this altar, I said if I have the privilege, I will say to her, keep doing it. Keep at it. Don't stop. The more you do, the better you become. Hallelujah. No gift is too small. Perfection is a work in progress. Perfection is a work of unity. For this church to attain to that level of excellency that the Lord has set for us, there is need for every hand to go on deck. Hallelujah. So when we say perfection, what are some things you need to know about perfection? I did not forget my testimony that I'm going to share with you one mighty thing that the Lord did in the life of my own very sister-in-law. Number one, perfection is a work in progress. Genesis chapter 17, verse number one. And we come back here, remember I told you in verse 12 that for us to attain perfection, that little gift that God has given to you is meant for you to put to use it meant for you to keep to practice. Keep practicing. Keep doing it. Do not stop. Keep using it. Keep using it. Keep using it. The more you use it, the Bible said, the better you become. The perfected you become. I say to you young people, this sermon is for you. You are young. You are in school. You are studying. Your perfection comes from consistency. Keep doing what you are meant to do. Keep reading what you are meant to read. Keep practicing what you are meant to practice. You have found out that you have a special gift. Keep using it. You have a passion. Put it to work. Don't lay it aside. Hallelujah. God called Abraham to leave his father's house. He said, I will take you to a city. And out of you, I'm going to make a great nation. As you are sitting there, there are things that the Lord has spoken to you. There are nations inside of you. There are things the Lord wants to make out of you. But the Lord is saying that come and walk with me and be thou perfect. Amen. The first thing, perfection requires a walk with God. You must have a relationship with God. Before men, you must have a relationship with God. A functional relationship with God. Don't trade your relationship with God for eye service. Don't trade your relationship with God for friends. Don't trade your relationship with God for pleasure. Joseph was in the process of perfection. The Lord was taking him to the place of destiny. There were obstacles on the way. He met pleasure. He met Pharaoh's wife. What a privilege to enjoy. What a privilege to be given a whole estate and be having pleasure in privacy. And that is why things that we hide can hide us if we do not expose them early. If there is anything you struggle with, expose it early before it hides you. God called Abraham. He said, I want to make you great. But there is a price to be paid. Perfection requires a price. Ask heavy, high flyer. They will tell you that excellence requires a price. There is a price. Young people, you want to be the best, there is a price. There is a time to sow. There is a time that you must shut your door. And, and, and shut down every other thing and say, Lord, this is my assignment. In your academics, there is a price. Joseph paid the price all the way. Abraham, the Lord called Abraham, come. I want to make you great. And I was thinking it was going to be a very
very easy journey. If God calls you and you hear him audibly, it should be very easy. But God is a wise God. Because things that happen suddenly, they disappear suddenly. He needs to groom you. He needs to prepare you. He needs to make you. And that's why when you go for interview, what they ask is tell us your experience. The experience they are asking you is not, is not just beautiful, sweet stories you tell. They, are, they want you to tell them the difficult situation you have found yourself in the course of your profession and you were able to crack them and solve them. Then they know that this young man or young woman is prepared. Hallelujah. Amen. So number one, perfection requires a walk with God. How is your relationship with God? It's a question we must take home. And I want to say to you that God is so loving. He's so kind and so faithful that whenever we come and we say, this is, this is me, Lord. Accept me the way I am. The Lord will accept you. He will pour his love over you again. He will wash you, he will cleanse you. He will renew you afresh. Your altar will begin to bubble with fire again. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So number one, perfection requires a relationship work with God. And I also think about working like a little child. Have you seen a child that is living the crawling stage, the, the holding and the standing to the, to the moving stage. Very likely, the first three steps, the child will fall. I'm sure uh, Pastor Lawrence has one in his house, as we speak. She will try to move, move, she will fall. But if you notice the little child, she will never stop. So number two, when you walk and you fall, do not stop. Get up! Get up! Get up and move! Get up! Do not stop! Get up! Proverbs 24 verse 16. Oh, you thought you were already perfect. You thought you were already strong. And suddenly you find yourself, you are on the floor. The Bible says, get up. Proverbs 24 verse number 16. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Because I know that somebody will be strengthened today in the name of Jesus. Amen. Before we started, I told you your mouth is your, is your destiny. Use it. Because you don't know when that word will come. Hallelujah. Amen. He said, for a just man falls seven times. Seven, not once. Seven. What an encouragement for me. Hallelujah. Amen. And he does what? He rises again. So air is human. When you fall, it is natural. But when you remain falling, then it becomes abnormal. When you fall, do well to rise. Don't stay there. Do well to rise. Ask for help if you need it. Ask for help. Iron sharpens iron. For a just man fall seven times and rise up again. Perfection requires that we keep rising and rising and gaining strength. And that is why we need to appear before God in Zion. I'm not that strong. If I, when you come to God's presence, he renews your strength. You could miss your step, but don't stop walking. My little Gabriella never stopped walking. She will miss it, she will try again. Give her the next three months, we will be the one to be trying to tame her in this auditorium. Write down my word. Three months. Mommy will start saying, hold her, hold her. But there was a time that she couldn't move three steps. Is that not true? Young people never give up on your dreams. Never give up. I'm such a person that don't give up on my dreams. I don't give up. No way. If I see it, I go for it. When my husband started ministry, and he was about to leave the ministry where he was, he called the leaders. They blessed us. They prayed for us. We left the church whole as it were. It is wrong to leave a church and scatter the church. He's waiting for you in the future. Then my father 
I was alive, he was in my house. Then the ministry was to start. The first Sunday of the ministry was my husband, myself, my father, and my baby brother, who is our last born. And my, husband, my father blessed us. He blessed us with the blessing of a father. And he said, you will multiply. He said, you will multiply. I've been on the streets doing evangelism, carrying things on my head, chairs, carrying chairs, everything, to set up ten to grow the church. I've seen the church from that four grew to seven, to nine, fell back to seven, back to nine, to fourteen, to twenty. Today I can count again. Hallelujah. I'm never afraid. And often time I tell my body, I say the ministry is out there. Part of the perfection work that we must do is to go out there and let somebody know that Jesus is still Lord. Hallelujah. It doesn't matter how, how, how more than the world has become. Like Brother Lawrence was saying, the word of God is here and amen. It never changes. Season come and season goes. This word remains the same. It is new every morning. As he shared that scripture in Zechariah, I said that scripture is a ritual. You know why? He said, oh mountain, shout grace on the mountain. I've gotten a different style of prayer. So when I'm faced with mountain, I shouldn't carry iron or something and begin to break. The Lord says, begin to shout what? Grace, grace, grace. And grace is one of the tools for perfection. Apostle Paul was a, he, he said, he said, among all the apostles, among everybody, I am a chief sinner. But when grace found him, when grace came, he washed him, he cleansed him. The Lord perfected him. Reverend was saying the other day that when he appeared before the church, because we're human beings, we judged, they didn't want to accept him. When you are faced with the mountain, we got a ritual this morning. Shout what? Grace! 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 Upon it. Grace, hallelujah! Hallelujah! Amen. Things you need to know about perfection. Number one, have a working relationship with God. Number two, there is a possibility that you will fall. But when you fall, do what? Rise again. Don't stop. Don't stop. Keep working. Keep working. Keep working. Hallelujah. Amen. There could be delay in the process of perfection. At this point, I want to share this testimony. If this is all you can get, take it home and let it change your perspective and your perception about the situation that you're going through. The year I got married, I had a sister-in-law who is younger to my husband. He came from a very kingly family. They are very large. And that same year, she also got married. At least I waited a while before God allowed me to have the fruit of the womb. And this is my fruit. But as we speak, her first fruit is just three years old. We married the same year. Prayers everywhere. But the good thing she and a young man, they held themselves tight. One of the secrets is agreement. They held each other tight. They never let go. Don't let challenges of life put asunder. Life is about seasons. When you do not understand the season, go to God and let him interpret to you. They held on. Then the Lord visited them three years ago. They had a daughter. Last year, I was back home in Nigeria. The brother daughter to the event, the birthday ceremony of my husband that we did. Last week, my husband called me and said, ah, the, the, the sister had just given birth again. Oh, I said, praise God, I'm so happy. I spoke with her during the birth. I was so joyful. And he said, no, hold on. I said, what? He said, she gave birth to three boys that ago. <laughs> Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Three what? Three boys in one bed. After 20 years of marriage, three boys in one bed. What does 
What does she want to ask from the Lord? Don't ask me how God will look after those children. Those children are already a star already. Hallelujah. When there is a delay, it is human for hope to weary. But don't give up. Amen. There could be delay in the process of perfection. You could have a dream or a vision. You are pursuing it. There could be delay. Hannah was going to Shiloh every year, every year, every year. Is this God a wicked God? No. He's a merciful God. His ways are not our ways. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are the thoughts of God higher than our thoughts. So are his ways higher than our ways. That testimony, I was drunk, I was in my office, I was almost misbehaving because I couldn't contain the joy. Such testimony and beyond that, God will give to somebody in this house in the name of Jesus. I don't know what it is that you're believing God for, but it's been declared that this is a season of perfection. Is it about your health? God is a maker of organs. I will never forget that service. There was this beautiful sister in our church. Today she's in America with her daughter. She was in that marriage, no child. That morning she came to the service so heavy. And suddenly the spirit of faith jumped on the man of God. And he began to declare. He said there is a woman here. There is a report in your bag. That report says you carry fibro. I convert that fibro to a baby. Yes. Hallelujah. After the service, she came to me, she said ah, that she just got this report yesterday night and she had not spoken to anyone except her husband and she knows her husband had not spoken to pastor. How come pastor knew that there is a report in her bag that is a fibro? She said, ma, I don't need prayer again because this is a report. I wanted pastor to pray, but he has prayed for me. Hallelujah. Nine months later, Fibro became a baby girl. The name of that baby is Wonderful. Wonderful. When she went for the report that said she was pregnant, we used to have a breakfast meeting in the morning. She came and followed, fell on my chest, and she was crying like a baby. She said, the fibro is now a baby. There is no impossibility in God. It might tarry, but it will come to pass. Wait for it. Don't go away from the Lord. Many reasons why some are falling away is because they hope and they hope and they hope and they thought that God was coming too late. Some of our decisions were hasty because we thought that God was too late. Hold on. Hold on. The Lord is coming. Hold on. Hold on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Don't give up. It might be left. He might tell it, but wait for it. Wait for it. Hannah waited. Hallelujah. This is for the young people. One of the secrets of perfection is having the right friends. Who is your friend? Our pastor that spoke, that thought about, that spoke this morning on the wisdom for the day gave us an intro to that. Be good to everybody, but be mindful of who has your ears. As a young lady, be mindful of who has your ears. Because they can determine your height by what they say to you and by what you believe. Daniel had good friends. Even when they were given a task that was impossible, he had the right people. He said, God is taking us somewhere. God is taking us somewhere. This impossible tax is a key to our greatness. You must know that that tax that looks impossible is a key to your greatness. Keep cracking it. Don't stop. Keep cracking it. In whatever sphere you have found yourself, keep cracking it. In Mark chapter 4, he spoke about a man that was paralyzed. He was blessed to have four good friends. When Jesus came to the neighborhood, the Bible said these four friends made up their mind to see Jesus. 
with their friend. Be sure that your friends are the ones that want to see Jesus. Be sure that your friends are not the ones that want to take you, that, that will be taking you out of the light. No. Let it be a friend that will bring you rather to the light. Let your friend draw you closer to the light. Let your friend be a motivator. Let your friend share ideas with you that will propel you to climb the ladder of success in life. Have friends that are like-minded. Men and women of focus. People that have a vision and a purpose. Hallelujah. I said it earlier that perfection requires repetition. One of the keys to success, one of the keys to perfection is repetition. Keep doing it. Don't stop. Keep doing it. And the Lord will show forth his glory in your life in the name of Jesus. Amen. There is also perfection through thanksgiving. When pastor was teaching us during the week, we read the story, the story of the ten lepers that were cleansed. And often time, when I check life, I run back to the altar of grace. Because grace makes a difference. The other nine may not know that there was need for them. They never meant evil. They do not meant evil. After all, the Lord has cleansed them. The Lord has healed them. It's Jesus that healed them. There was nothing extra. Jesus. But the spirit of grace. Minister to one of them. Now there is need to go back. And say thank you. To the Lord. One of the keys to perfection. Is to live a life of appreciation. A life of thanksgiving. Let's be thankful to God. For the little beginning. Job said, though my beginning might be small, but my latter end shall be richly great. Little is much when you have God in it. Let's be like that one leopard. Jesus was, was mindful. And he turned and he said, were there not ten that were cleansed? Maybe if they had not come, he wouldn't have said anything. He said, were there not ten? That were cleansed. How come you are just the only one who returned? May you be that one in the name of Jesus. Amen. Because when we strike the right key, we are lifted from the realm of being healed to the realm of divine health. I believe so much that perfection also brings healing. The healing of that man was made perfect. By the key of thanksgiving. And thanksgiving must not be until you carry the whole building and say, Oh, I'm the one that built the sanctuary. Jesus taught us the key of thanksgiving when the widow dropped her little mind. And among the big gifts that were presented, Jesus was mindful of that gift. Why? Because the Lord sees the heart of man. And that is why I can't go away from church. It doesn't matter what people say. Your heart first with the Lord. Be sure that your heart is right with the Lord. Every other thing is extra. Hallelujah. Amen. So let's learn the key of thanksgiving. And I'm so thankful the way our youth are going. Because precept upon precept at every junction, they are learning the key of what? Thanksgiving and appreciation. This week was my birthday. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I want to appreciate you for the prayers and the well wishes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord bless you all in the name of Jesus. Amen. And you see this beautiful necklace on my neck. When I returned from work, I saw the beautiful package on my table. Hallelujah. It doesn't matter the size, but I appreciate the spirit behind it. My children, the team together. And they say we will buy something for mommy. Hallelujah. Yes. That's the kind of children I want to raise. Yes, that have a sense of discretion. To know what to do like the sons of Isiaka. You 
must know what to do, children. Listen to me. Your mother wakes every morning. Your father wakes up every morning. Don't take that labor for vain. Don't take it for granted. I appreciate them at every junction. Yesterday was my little daughter's birthday. After the whole thing, they had to make a video. I said, Mommy, I don't know how to say thank you. Just take this video. And I'm just saying thank you. I said, that's the spirit. Hallelujah. You must learn those things step by step. Put them to you step by step. As you go on in life, learn to appreciate your parents. It's part of the perfection. Don't disobey them. The key to long life is obedient. Obey your parents. Their English might not be as smooth as your own. We were not born in Ireland. We came here. So if I'm speaking Nigeria English, please, sharpen your ear and hear me well. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The other day I was speaking to someone in front. He said, you're from where? I said, what has that got to do with this transaction? Hallelujah. And do the transaction that we are talking about. Leave my tribe alone. Hallelujah. Perfection is a process, like I said. And one of the greatest secrets of perfection is in Psalm chapter 84, verse number 7. And we are going to close. Psalm 84, verse number 7. Media, help me. He said, they go from strength to strength. Every one of them in Zion appearing before God. They go from strength to strength. They go from strength to strength. Everyone, not just a few, everyone, as long as you can appear before God in Zion, everyone, they go from strength to strength. The more you appear, the stronger you become. As the word is coming, it's not ordinary. When Reverend told me last night, my head was banging there because I was fucked out. And my bishop had given me an assignment for 6 a.m. today. I hadn't even prepared. I was fucked out. I said, but this message has no option for you, no. So I must do it. Scripture said they go from strength to strength. Every one of them in Zion appearing before God. That means each time you come into the church, you haven't appeared before the Renuka. You have appeared before God in where? In Zion. Yes, and strength is coming upon you. As you worship, as you dance, as you praise, as you sing. They go from strength to strength. One of the secrets that, that we always keep and have is that my children will never, never be away from Zion. Amen. I found Zion Amen. in my early 20s. And Zion changed the whole of my life. I don't know what I would have been today without Zion. Maybe I would have changed husband one or two. Maybe I would have been doing prostitution. I'm just saying. You can't tell what the devil can do. A sinner is a prey in the hand of the devil. When you live unguided, you are a victim. So you must appear before God in where? In Zion. From strength to strength. In Zion, I learn to pray. In Zion, I learn to pray. I gave my life to Jesus. I began to follow God. I learn to pray in Zion. And it's a covenant. All the children that the Lord has given to me, I gave them back to him. God never uses anyone and dumb them. He will use you and he will bless you. Release your children to serve the Lord. Sow them as offering. When God gets somewhere, Hannah said, Daddy, you know what? I give him back to you. Take him. Because I know when you take him, he has a better life. In whatever skill, in whatever profession you are, your, your, your purpose in life is to use that profession to better the work of God. Young people, don't let anyone deceive you. Your best is in Zion. Amen. Come to Zion. And every day the Lord will renew your strength. Amen. Are you sick in your body? Come to Zion. God is the maker of organs. He will give you new ones. Amen. He will give you new ones. Amen. Pastor, 
pastor shared a testimony the other day and I never recovered from that one when my sister in laws came on top. A woman that had a hip problem. The Lord carried out a surgery upon her overnight. Is there anything God cannot do? It reminded me when I was young, I wanted to gain admission into Unibet. Oh, the cutoff I needed, I couldn't meet it. Then I was working, a woman sent me to go and meet her professor-in-law at Unibet. But I needed to go to worry to collect a letter before I could take that journey. The moment I came down from the bus in Wadi at 5 p.m., there was war then between the Shekri and the rest of them. Curfew took effect. I was helpless. I haven't been to inside worry. I don't know my way. Lie down. We were all on the express, on the hot quota. We were all lying down. I said, Jesus, I surrender to you. Hallelujah. I'm sharing this story for a reason. When you dedicate your life to God, at those difficult junctions of your life, it will come to your rescue. Amen. I found favor on the side of the soldiers. They released a man and said, take this young woman to where she's going. When they got to a junction, this is my road. This is their road. They said, young woman, it's too risky. We can't go your way and come to our way. We come down here and this is the road. I came down in the dark. Where do I turn to? I saw one big house at the junction is a hotel. I ran inside. The moment I entered, what I saw, I couldn't stand. I ran back. <laughs> Naked women sitting on top of men. I said, Jesus is Lord. The security man said, come. I said, thank you. I ran. I walked. The road was dark. I saw a tree. I went and I hid under the tree. I was standing there in the dark. I don't know my way. Nobody to ask. And suddenly I saw a man coming dressed in white from the crown of his head to the toe. He was on the other side of the road walking. I was there. And the next thing I heard was, young woman, come. I look around. I was the only young woman in the whole of that environment. I stood again. He said, young woman. I said, come. I don't know what moved to me. Me too, I. I jump on the road. I cross to meet him. He didn't say any other thing again. He said, follow me. He's walking. I'm walking. He's walking. We are walking. For almost 30 minutes, we are just walking. I don't know where we are going. Fear would not allow me to ask him where we are going. Suddenly we got, you know, where you get to the inner parts. There was light people were roasting body and the rest of them. When we got there, he stood. He said, go this way. You see that road? Enter. That's your road. Who told him where I'm going? Who told him? I'm sharing life story with you. And when I said thank you, thank you. As I go to that road, I look at the address in my hand. I check the, the, the signboard. I saw the address. The only thing I was to do was to trace the number and I got to my destination. If you haven't seen God, I have seen God. Let's rise up on our feet. We are in the seasons of perfection. He said, they that go from, they go from strength to strength. Everyone is Zion that appears before God. When you come, you haven't appeared before the choir master or the choir mistress or the pastor or his wife or any other person in the house. You have appeared before God. This is Zion. This is Zion. The mountain of the living God. This is Zion where the living God is showing his power. This is Zion. Lift up your holy hands and worship the Lord. We are in the seasons of perfection. It doesn't matter how broken it is, the Lord can fix it. You have heard the testimony that I shared. Restoration cannot be more than that. Three boys in one bed. Not IVF, I'm talking of natural conception. Three boys in one bed. What is that issue that the doctor said is close? God is a way maker. He parted the Red Sea. He parted the Red Sea. He 
heal the leper. Those that were blind, they restored their sight. That power is still alive today. Men may have failed, God never failed. I want you to lift up your hands and begin to worship Him. Lift up your hands and begin to worship Him. Begin to say to the Lord, I'm in Zion, that He perfect my life. Perfect me in every way. You are the one that sees the secret things. Perfect my heart. He's the healer. He's still healing. He will heal tomorrow and He will heal forever. You are the mighty God. The great I am. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are the mighty God. Oh, yeah. The great I am. Great I am. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are the mighty God. question you ask yourself. Your relationship with God matters a lot. It matters a lot. Not just by coming to church, but when you are not in church, when you are out there, how is your relationship with God? Another thing I pick up is say, when you fall, get up and keep on moving. We face challenges every day of our life. But we will not remain there. Don't remain in that low state. 
Don't remain in that floor. Because when you remain in that floor, your own is finished. But immediately you recognize yourself, you recognize yourself, and get up and dust yourself and move forward. You see God carrying you and moving forward. Praise the Lord. She says, seasons come, seasons go. There's a season of laugh. There's a season of crying. They all come and go. So I don't know what that, I don't know what is that that is making you share tears. But I'm telling you this morning, the word of God has come forth. There's a season for everything. Amen. That season will go. Amen. And season of laughter will come in Jesus' name. Amen. If you believe it, praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. And it talks, it talks about youth. He said, youth, who are your friends? Your friends will keep matters a lot. When she was sharing her testimony, like when she was talking about you, I just think that I only have a, a friend. I have only one friend, a very good friend. And she's not in Ireland here. She's in Nigeria. She's the one that has drawn me close to God. Praise the Lord. She encourages me to lie. Even when, when, I, when I was getting married, a lot of sisters were coming. I don't know which one to choose. She opens my eyes. Praise the Lord. Who is your friend? Sometimes your friend will not tell you a sweet word. But I dare you if you take that. It pains. Even me, to myself. When you tell me the truth, it pains me. But when I go back to my closeness, you see the Spirit of God will begin to, you know, remind me things, you know, begin to tell me things, begin to tell me truth bitters. But what you bring out of that truth, or what you hold on, is what will help you out in life. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. And she talks about Thanksgiving. Every day of your life, my dear, Thanksgiving. It's not about money. It's not until when you package money and come and No! Let that Thanksgiving come from your heart. Let it come from your heart. If it's money, it's good, but when you don't have it, you shouldn't take your Thanksgiving from God. It shouldn't. Praise the Lord. You know, when I was I was speaking with youth yesterday. She touched the place I spoke yes, I spoke about yesterday. That was first Samuel. First Samuel chapter 3, verse 4 to 10. You know. Samuel was born as a gift from the Lord to his mother. Anna, the mother of Samuel, she promised to give God back to Samuel. She promised to give back to Samuel to God to raise by Eli. Yes. You know, and Samuel grew and sat. And when he was about 12 years old, he was awakened by the voice of the Lord. And when we are praying last year, is the young people. I say, God, and when I read this, I say, God, our young people need to hear God by themselves. Samuel was 12 years when the voice of God awakened him. Go and read that verse. I was talking to our young priest. I said, Our mothers, our fathers, they are bringing you to church. It's part of handing you over to God. Giving you, God, I have this child you have given to me. I present it back to you. This child will serve you. And my prayer to our young people is that. He will continue to serve God in the name of Jesus. Amen. And my prayer to our mothers, our fathers, our parents, that we continue to encourage our children to serve God. Amen. Because I can tell you, honestly, I can tell you, I have been a witness of faith. When the parents who come to church, maybe don't like what is happening to church, you are angry, they bring the children, they put them down. I have seen it. He said, no, instead this child will do that in church. No, 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 let me, no. I don't want to go, oh, face, it's the church. Church is the woman is drawing it. It's not spirit. Even if you move from here and go to another place, you will meet it. Oh, face, this will come. Oh, face, this will come. And don't let your face take you out of your place of blessing. I was in church, and somebody said, I must go, and I said, me? 
Except if I know that God did not ask me to stay in that church. I won't go. I said I won't go. I did not go. And she went. Hallelujah. Look at the blessings of God. So it's an encouragement word that have come out this afternoon. And I encourage us. Let's put it in, in, in practice. And it will be well with us in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Offering time. Praise Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. Hallelujah. The Lord is good. All the time. And all the time. All the he has done me well. Yes. Yes. It's only me he has done well. Oh, I thought it was only me. Oh, Offering time. time. Offering time. Praise Jesus. I read from uh, Proverbs 10, 15, and 16. It said, The rich man's word is his strong city. The destruction of the poor is their poverty. The labor of the righteous tended to life, the fruit of the wicked to sin. Praise Jesus. Hallelujah. When you hold your word, it becomes everything for you. It becomes a strong city. Nobody will touch it. Nobody will near it. Because it's all your goal of your life you put in a box. But when you give to God, you are making investment for future. You are making investment for future. The Bible says, let your word where there is no word, where the, the ant cannot come in and destroy. You are laying your word where it is being covered, where it is being protected, where it, the investment will grow. Praise Jesus. Hallelujah. This is the thing said, the labor of the righteous tender to life. The labor of the righteous tend to life. That means your labor is not in vain. Your labor is growing. Your labor is bearing fruit. Your labor is seed that does not die, but it changes with life. Praise Jesus. Can we prepare our friend? Let us lift our friends. Father, in the authority, in the name of Jesus. Amen. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. Amen. The righteous run into him and be saved. Amen. Father, our endless giving, may it bear fruit. Amen. 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 Richly in the name of Jesus, yes. is going to be tender to life. Yes. Lord, because in, unto your hand, Father, you said that which is committed into your hand is safe. Because no one can bring into your hand and go it. Lord, we bless you with the blessings of all that you have given unto us this morning. Lord, King of glory. Our job is in your hand. Our promotion is in your hand. Our businesses is in your hand. Our education activities is in your hand. Lord, let there be promotion. Let there be abundance in the name of Jesus. King of glory, bless your people richly in the name of Jesus. 
Father, they shall never lack. Amen. They shall never lack. Amen. They shall never lack. Amen. Those who are looking unto you for wisdom, Father, open doors for wisdom. Amen. Open doors for education. Amen. Open doors for achievements. Amen. Father, they will. Father, they will expand in the name of Jesus. Amen. They will never lack. In the authority in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Excellence of Israel. Thank you, Thank you the King of Kings. Yes, you are the cornerstone. Amen. You are the mighty builder. Oh, yes. Lord, build us in the name of Jesus. Amen. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Offering time. Come and see the Lord. Everybody can give online. Hallelujah. Um, I want to use the opportunity to appreciate everyone for our pastor's birthday. God bless every one of you. God bless every one of you. When we when we got home, we are just huh? <laughs> oh, it was awesome. It was awesome. We are just opening our mouths. We can appreciate you and love, you know. But all we say is that God continue to bless every one of you in Jesus' name. We really love you, we really appreciate you. Thank you for the gifts. Thank you for everything in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. On Tuesday is our uh, on Tuesday is um, sorry. On Tuesday is our grace. 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. Please let's make our time to come and pray. Um, and I know that our children they are all in holidays now. So let's everybody. Please, let's come around and pray together. Family that prays together stays together. Hallelujah. Okay. Hallelujah. I, our Yana praise is coming up on 23rd and 24th. That's in two weeks' time. Hmm. We still have so far, so far. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
And please, our dressing code that is white and white is a white party. Jesus party, white and white. Holy Ghost party. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, when they ask to go and spend too much money, I know that they can mash it up. You know the way we do. Hallelujah. And if you want to buy a new one, that's fine. Nobody's holding you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, on Monday, tomorrow, all workers we have meeting. All workers must join that meeting. It's 9 o'clock. Praise the Lord. Please, so that we can be able to plan for the Yana praise. It's almost there. Praise the Lord. So we're having a meeting tomorrow. All workers, please, 9 p.m. Everybody, please, I would like to see you there. And God bless you in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Um, a week to the Yana praise. That's in two weeks. From Monday, we'll be fasting and prayer. So the pastor will give us how... The direction how it will go. Praise the Lord. It's good for us to pray into the program, and I believe that um, when we do our part, God will do His part in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Can we stand on our feet? God bless everyone. But can we stand on our feet? Okay. The direction. Praise the Lord. Okay, let's go. The Lord gave me seed to sow and bread to eat. He guides me continually. He satisfies my soul in ground. He makes my bones fat. I am like a well water garden and like a stream of water whose water fell not. I will bring house and live in them. I will plant my yard and eat the fruit of them. I will not build and another inherit. I will not plant and another eat. I shall not live in bed, nor bring forth for trouble. I will not go out in haste, nor go by fight. For the Lord will go before me, and God of Israel will be my reward. His kindness shall not depart from me, neither shall the covenant of peace be removed. Every day and in every way, I am getting better, spiritually, physically, financially, mentally, morally, in all my endeavors, I am called for a purpose, I will fulfill this purpose, and I will arrive at God's best for my life. Nothing will God be short, I will make a contributing part in my work for the kingdom. It is my year of acceleration, because there is a power in the word of God. Hallelujah. May you go and prosper in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. The grace. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us forevermore. Amen. God bless us as he shall follow me all the days of our lives, and we shall go in the house of the Lord forever and ever.